Over the last week, the S&P 500 has been on a bit of a roller coaster with a lot of red right across the board. But today we are stepping aside and we are drawing our attention to six undervalued European stocks that are right there towards their 52 week lows. Now, each one has a lot of upside, but we want to do an in-depth look and understand whether or not we should give some serious consideration to add them in our portfolio. Now, the first one is Evolution AB, and we can see over the last 12 months, it is down around 24%, trading right there towards its 52-week lows. And on a trailing 12-month basis, it does have a P of around 17. For those that are interested, just for comparison, S&P sits around 23. And we do note it does have a nice yield just over 3% on a forward looking basis. Now, if you have been a holder over the last five years, you would be up around 317%, but we can see all time highs during this period were just under $200. That is pretty much double the current trading price. Now, not every single one of these companies will have the dividend safety score. So let's get our own analysis to see how that looks. First thing to note, the latest increase to the dividend, very rapid increase, 33%, double digit that we love to see. And in terms of market cap, it does have a large cap sitting at 20 billion. Now, dividend growth, very, very nice. 33% as we mentioned over the last full year, 62% on average over the last five, and 53% increase a true dividend growth company just over the more recent period. Now, when we take a look at this company in terms of the payout ratio, very important when we want to analyze the dividend growth of a company. What we can see, in fact, over the last six to seven years, it has been around that 60% or lower, which is what we target for companies we want to consider in the portfolio. As that does give us faith, management can continue to offer very strong growth over the next 12 months, anticipated to be around 47%. So no worries whatsoever so far. Free cash flow growth, consistent increases over the longer term, pretty much what we get and very nice growth in fact, just over the last few years, going from 5 cents in 2014, 503 in 2023, and expected to go up even more, in fact, nearly 10% growth over the next 12 months. So does look very good from a free cash flow perspective. Then we talk about sales growth. Remember when we're looking at this on a deep dive in the numbers, three to 7%, but we want to see that as a bare minimum. We see double digit every single year. So quite a nice growth company as well, still growing at a very strong rate. 23% in the more recent year as well. When we look at it numerically, it has gone from around 50 million in 2014 to around 1.8 billion in the more recent year. Shares outstanding. As always, we love it when companies do share buybacks. We will point out though, they would have diluted your position over the last 10 years, although very marginally. And in fact, from 2021, although very trivially, they have done some share buyback. We then want to see a very strong number on the ROIC, as this is one of the most important metrics we look at when investing in companies. 10% or more, give us faith, management are able to effectively allocate their capital. 2014 to 2019, very strong. It did drop down to 11% in that COVID year, which is still marginally higher than the minimum we want to see. Since then, it has been increasing 32% on a trailing 12-month basis, does look phenomenal. We love to see that, the growth there, as well as the bounce back from the 2020 period. Operating margin. Now, as we always say, we want increases to revenue. We also want to see increases to margin. Only the very high quality companies can do that. Evolution, clearly one of those, as we can see, 64% in 2023 is a very strong number to know for a company in this industry. And in terms of the free cash flow margin, it has been growing over the longer term, 61%. If you just go and look at some of the episodes on this channel, this is probably one of the best, if not up there in the top three or four in terms of this metric, looking very good, especially if they can at a minimum just maintain those levels. Net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. We want to see below three for this metric. And what this means, the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand and correlates to dividend safety and balance sheet strength, showing us it wouldn't even take them one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. A very strong balance sheet. No surprises then when you consider this with the free cash flow payout that they can continue to increase that dividend at a very rapid rate. So it does look very good. How about the valuation? Our intrinsic value today comes at $131. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified 
of these videos as they drop. Now we get to 131, as you can see with these four models, typically when we do an in-depth look at each one of these companies, we do run through every single model, the inputs and the outputs. Getting straight into it then with a current price of $94, margin of safety as always, minimum 10%, and we execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. Now, if you believe that, well, it is a buy up to $118. Then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And what we can see in today's episode, you are getting at least a 25% MOS. At the 30%, it isn't too far off, but not quite there yet. So sitting somewhere for evolution, 25 to 30%. With Wall Street, very bullish, 126 price target. They see 34% upside over the next 12 months. As always, as we go along with these European stocks, do give us your thoughts below if you are looking to buy or maybe they're on the watch list. Now, before we move on to the next stop, just to let you know, we have released a spreadsheet with 55 dividend growth stocks detailing which ones we believe to be significantly undervalued. If you want access to this or any other articles, you can click on the pinned comment below and you will get instant access. Now, the next one we're looking at is LVMH. Now, this one, as we can see, down 24% over the last 12 months. They're trading right towards the lower end of the 52-week range. And we get a buy from Seeking Alpha, a 4.25 out of 5, with a yield on a trailing 12-month basis just below 2%, and a P on a trailing 12 months is slightly lower than the S&P at 22.5. Now, if you're a longer-term shareholder, you would be up 318%, significantly outperforming the S&P 500. We do also note all-time highs around last year, this time sitting at just under $1,000. Now, in terms of looking at the dividend growth, well, 8% increase over the last full year, double digits both over the last five as well as the last 20. So a similar one to Evolution that does grow their dividend at a very strong rate. In terms of the free cash flow payout, remember below 60%, pretty much what we get every single year, 61 in 2023, no worries with the safety so far. Then we look at the free cash flow per share, and what we note, it has nearly quadrupled over the last 10 years. Granted, it peaked in 2021, down to 2023, but it is looking over the next 12 months to actually go on to an all-time high in terms of the free cash flow generated. And when we look at the sales growth again, we have to point out negative 17% for 2020. Bear in mind that was COVID lockdown. Consumers were maybe unable to go to their stores to buy the products they wanted. But over the longer term, nearly double digit every single year, 9% in 2023. And numerically speaking, we do know nearly tripled over the last 10 years. Now shares outstanding, not going to talk too much about it purely for the fact over the last 10 years, they have just bought back around 4 million worth. Very trivial, especially on a percentage lookout. Then on the ROIC, consistently very strong in the high teens, the low 20s. In fact, 21 over the last two years. Looking good, not just above the 10% minimum we want to see, but also very consistent, something that investors do tend to pay a bit of a premium for. We do also note operating efficiency margins going from 19% to 26% over the last 10 years. And the free cash flow margin looking very healthy, well above the minimum 5%, 12% just in 2023. Finally, the net debt to EBITDA, remember below three for the majority of companies, 1.6 over the last two years. Again, pretty much expects to be around that over the next 12 months. So no worries so far based on this information. The company's balance sheet does look okay. And the dividend again does look to be fairly safe. In terms of the valuation, well, $910 is our intrinsic value. Not far off Wall Street, they see $930. Their price target does see around 32% upside over the next year. Bear in mind as well, you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below and running through your own numbers, whether it's for LVMH or other companies in your portfolio. MOS level then at that 10%, a buy up to $819. At 15%, around $774 at 20% around 728 and in today's episode we can see not quite at that 25% level yet sitting somewhere between a 20 to 25. Now those who are in the Patreon group again the link is below will note that this one has definitely been on my watch list and one that I am looking very soon to add shares in the portfolio. The next stock we're looking at is Nestle now they have a double buy with a hold from Quant. It is trading right there at the 52 week lows with another yield sitting just over 3% Forward P sitting around 19 and over the last year, negative 17% over the last 10 years. If you have been a shareholder, not the greatest performance, up 36%. We do also note all-time highs, December 21, $140. 
In terms of the dividend safety, well, we do have a score here, 99, the highest score obtainable, and they did increase their dividend in February this year, 1.4%, well below that 4% we want to see just to keep up in line with inflation. In terms of the last recession, while well, they did increase the dividend during the 0709 Great Recession, they had average growth as well, negative 12.5%, pretty much in line with the S&P. As we mentioned, very poor trivial growth this year, in line with inflation over the last five years and marginally higher over the last 20. 7% is respectable over the longer term. In terms of the growth as well, they've increased it 23 years in a row. That means they are two years away from becoming a dividend aristocrat. When we can, we also like to look at dividend yield theory. It does state a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average, which we can clearly see here. So a very severe sign of undervaluation and it is one of the highest yields they have offered over the last five years just bear in mind that we don't look at this one model in pure isolation free cash flow power well this one is a little bit too high below 70 percent so we lift it for industry specific consumer staples 92 and 21 122 in 2022 this indicates management paid out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow a red flag indicator not something you would note by looking at the earnings payout hence why we don't tend to look at this data it is also susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting nice to note though over the next 12 months it is anticipated to come down to around 69 percent then when we look at the free cash flow remember consistent increases not something we see with nestle it does look to be pretty stagnant over the longer term although we do anticipate an increase over the next 12 months then when we look at the sales growth, 3 to 7% as a minimum, as we mentioned. But we do have to point out four of the last 10 years have been negative, including 2023. In terms of numericals as well, when you do look at it, very marginal growth over the longer term. And what we would point out here is that if you were to factor in inflation, in terms of real numbers, they would actually have a decreasing trend to the total sales. When we look at these shares outstanding though, nice to note they do return excess cash. They have done a fair amount of share buybacks consistently year on year, effectively giving you a larger portion of the company to own as a shareholder. ROIC as well, very consistent. Remember 12% or more for consumer staples. We raise this as well, pretty much in the mid-teens year on year. Then we look at the margins again, consistency on that around 16 to 17% throughout the period. And the free cash flow margin as well, other than the dip in 2022, around the 10 to 13 percent. Finally, we get to the net debt to EBITDA. One thing we would say is there is an increasing trend, which is a little bit of a red flag indicator, something just to keep an eye on. But also bear in mind, we raise it to four for the consumer staples industry, around 2.49 anticipated over the next 12 months. So we can see why this dividend does look to be very safe, as we mentioned earlier. In terms of the valuation, well, $122 as the intrinsic value, current price $100, so there is a nice MOS level, at 10%, a buy at 110 at that 20%, not at that price just yet, probably not that far off it, so sitting somewhere between 15-20% to in today's episode, with Wall Street bullish, 20% upside, their price target $120. The next stock we're looking at is Caring SA, another buy rating from Seeking Alpha, trading right at its 52-week low, down 46% over the last 12 months, over the last 10 years, up around 65%, but we can in fact see right the way down, in fact, nearly a third of its all-time highs in August 21, three years ago at $946. In terms of the PE as well, trading 12-month basis, just under 13, and a fairly high yield in comparison to the previous ones today at 4.84%. In terms of dividend safety, we don't have that score just yet for this company. But when we take a look at their dividend growth, we do know they haven't increased it over the last four years. Over the last five and the last 10 years, though, there is some respectable increases. In fact, 14% just over the last 10. Then when we look at the free cash flow payout, what we do know, 93% in 2023. No surprises where there is no increase just yet. Over the next 12 months, hopefully we will see it come down a lot lower just so that there is some room for this company to pay a nice increase. But again, that will depend on the company's overall performance. Free cash flow per share as well, very, very inconsistent. Some nice increases on a year-on-year -year basis, but from 2021 highs of 31.4, it has come down to 15.1 in 23, pretty much a half of that. But then we do see over the next 12 months, it is anticipated to increase. In terms of the sales growth, similar to Nestle, we do have negative growth. In fact, three of the last 10 years with the more recent decrease in 2023. Numerically, though, they have pretty much doubled their top line 
over the last 10 years with doing some share buybacks, but again, very, very minimal. In fact, they've bought back around 3 million shares over the 10 year period. ROIC, a lot of inconsistency, but you could argue at least around the 10% or more, 13% in 2023. So it doesn't look too bad. And when we look at both margins, a lot of inconsistency throughout this whole company and their metrics. Again, whether or not that is something that deters you, it may not as an investor, just something we want to point out as we can clearly see as we've been going through these metrics. And finally, the net debt to EBITDA sitting at 3.04 in 23. Remember, ideally, we want to see three as an absolute maximum expected to go a little bit higher over the next 12 month period. Now, this does bring us into the valuation where we get an intrinsic value of $389. Now, one thing to bear in mind with this, just because a company looks to be undervalued with Wall Street giving a very nice upside, as we can see here, it doesn't mean you should invest in it for the longer term. Ideally, we want to be looking at high quality companies, but this is just something to show you whether or not you want to do your own investment thesis and take this a little bit further. Now, our intrinsic value, $389 with an MOS at 10%, a buy at 350 at 20% around 310, not at a 25% level just yet, more towards a 20% MOS in today's episode, up to $311, with Wall Street indicating 29% upside, 392 target price. As always, let us know your thoughts about these stocks as we go through them today. This then takes us on to DO, where we have a pick and mix, a sell for quant, a hold from Wall Street, and a buy from Seeking Alpha, trading right there towards its 52 week low with another yield just over 3%, a forward P sitting just over 7 and over the last year, negative 26%, so really hammered just through the last 12 months. Over the last 10 years, marginally up around 10%. We can, in fact, see all-time highs sitting at $220, nearly double the current value. Then when we look at dividend safety, another very safe score at 99 and a fairly standard increase at 5%, again, marginally higher than inflation. In terms of the last recession, while well, they increased the dividend, they had positive 5% sales, which was above the average, and they had a near S&P performance, negative 51. Remember, S&P negative 55. As we mentioned, 5% over the last four year, in line with inflation over the last five, and around 6% over the last 20 year on year. They are also a dividend aristocrat. They have been increasing those dividends for the last 25 years. In terms of dividend yield theory, well, we note a double undervaluation signal, Yield is higher than the five-year average, as well as the forward P sitting below the five-year 22.6. But we do note it is pretty much around the consumer staple sector of 17.6. Then when we draw your attention to the free cash flow payout, a bit of volatility, 101% in 2020, 98% in 23. And we do note over the next 12 months, expected to come down, but still higher than the 70% we want to see for this industry. The same to be said for the free cash flow, a lot of inconsistency, and we do note it is down from the highs of 2021 in 2023, but expected to increase over the next 12 month period. Unfortunately, like the previous two companies, we do get another negative growth through their top line, three of the last 10 years. However, in better news, the last two years did see double digit growth to their top line. And when we zoom out and look at the last 10 years, we do see around 70% growth from that 10.3 billion in 2014. They've also done some share buybacks, but also had some years where they've done nothing. Overall, very minimal returning of excess cash to shareholder pocket. ROIC consistently looking pretty decent in the mid teens a year on year. And when we look at the margins, again, consistency on the operating margin side around the high 20s to low 30s. Free cash flow margin as well does look fairly respectable. So, in terms of margins, DO does look fairly attractive. Then when we draw your attention to the net debt to EBITDA, 2.61 in 23, not too bad, just a little bit of a worry it is increasing to around 3.14, so something just to bear in mind. And as always, you can factor this in to the margin of safety. Now our intrinsic value gives a margin of safety at 10%, a buy around $132, which isn't dissimilar from the current trading price. So in today's episode 4 DO, whilst we see a 10% MOS, Wall Street consider upside of 15%, their price target $150. Whether or not this is attractive enough for you to consider executing on, do give us your thoughts below. We then move on to a highly requested company. It is BMW with a buy rating from Seeking Alpha and a double hold from the other two analysts, trading again towards the 52-week lows with a fairly high yield just below 7% at 6.74, a fairly low forward P at just over 5, 5.38 to be exact, and over the last 12 months, down 21% over the last 10 years, 
down negative 18%. Not a great stock if you have been a shareholder over the last 10 years, but as always, past performance is not an indicator of future performance. Now, when we take a look at this company's dividend growth, we do know they had a dividend cut over the last full year, negative 29%. But over the last five and the last 20 years, they have historically increased that dividend at a double digit rate. Then when we look at the free cash flow payout from 2020, or in fact, before then, they were free cash flow negative, as we are about to see. But it isn't too bad. It is still below the 60%. However, it is upward trending at a fairly rapid rate, something just to bear in mind. When we do look at the free cash flow share, negative for quite some time. In fact, six of the last 10 years negative, And we do see it from 2020 to 2023 positive, but very minimal consistency. So again, bear that in mind. And over the next 12 months, it is anticipated to be flat from the previous year. Sales growth as well, percentage, two of the last 10 years is negative, but over the last three years looking very respectable. And when we look at it over the longer term, pretty much doubled their top line from 2014 to 2023. Again, another company with the shares outstanding, very minimal movement over the period. And when we look at the ROIC, the lowest today, below 10% every year, bar 2023, where they did hit that bang on 10% level. That may be a concern if you, again, do also want to look for something around 10% or more. In terms of operating margin, maybe one of the lowest we have seen today, definitely below the 16 cent minimum we want to look at. And free cash flow margin, we want to see 5% or more, something they've only been able to achieve three of the last 10 years. Finally, we get to the net debt to EBITDA. It has historically been very, very high. Below three, we only achieved that from 2021. 1.73 and 23 is nice to note. 1.92 over the next 12 months. Even though we get an increase, it doesn't look too bad. But again, there are lots of things you need to consider with this company. We look at the intrinsic value. As always, though, don't forget if you enjoy the content, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And you can always grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below. So margin of safety then at that 10% level, it is a buy at around $33.74. At the 15%, Pretty much around the current trading price, we're talking around 13 cents shy. So if that is something that you believe is attractive at that level, it could be one to consider in the portfolio. In terms of Wall Street and their expectations, well, $40, so higher than our intrinsic value, and they also believe upside looking respectable at 26%. Now, a lot of people will always prefer to invest in an ETF, myself included. I do hold a portion of the portfolio in ETFs. One of them is the Vanguard FTSE All World ETF, VWRL. But again, that is an income-based one for those that prefer accumulation. You will just get a different ticker symbol, VWRP. Why I like this ETF, not only does it cover the S&P 500, because it also compromises of large and mid-sized company stocks in the developed and emerging markets. Now, when you look at it in terms of other ETFs, it does have a fairly high expense ratio at 0.22%, something just to consider. And it does have a very large number of stocks, 3,727. Now, those that want to know what their top holdings are, it doesn't look too dissimilar from when you look at other ETFs. You have the typical Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, and Amazon sitting there right at the top of the tree. And for example, for those that do want to see the other stocks that it holds, I can just go to the next few pages. But it is definitely one to consider in the portfolio if you want more exposure than just the S&P 500. For example, looking at an ETF like VUSA, VUSA for the S&P 500 equivalent. In terms of the performance, well, over the last 18 months, we can in fact see it has gone from around that $105 mark, right now sitting around 133. And when we look at it in terms of percentage, year to date, it is up around 11%. Over the last three years, up 5% year on year. Over the last 10 years, around 8.39%. Since inception, just above 10%. Now, just one to consider. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to add this to portfolio, but this is one that I do personally hold. And I do like to make this one, as well as Vusa, a large portion of the portfolio, just to have that comfort and security, as well as investing in individual companies when I do believe they are undervalued. For example, we did have Visa that we discussed just yesterday that I did add to a new position in the portfolio. If you also want to see other stocks that I'm looking at buying, you can also come and join us in the Patreon, as well as the newsletter, which is completely free by clicking on that pinned comment below. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. We'll see you all on the next one. Let us know your comments and take care for now.